my reefing fam what's going on fragbox tv march here another video another day another video but you already know that because i am confident that you've already subscribed to this channel and if you haven't go ahead and do that because we do a video every single day a reef related video today's video i'm going to talk to you about what was going on with uh this aquarium over here this is what we call uh the display tank here in the store it's the largest display tank we have it's quite small by display tank standards. I guess that's relative, but um, for me, it's quite small. It's a 90 gallon, roughly 90 gallon, custom made peninsula tank. We do tons of videos on this tank. We use it to showcase and talk about corals on this channel. We're running the Aqua Illumination Hydra 32 HDs with a pair of AI Nero 5s running on the back. If you got any questions about the aquarium, the specifics, go back, check out the other videos or hit us up. This is a tank we custom make here in the store. But today's video is about what was going on with it because it's been going through actually quite a bit of trouble. I did that video showing how we killed that bird's nest, which is quite a feat. You know what? Uh, not good to kill any coral, but to kill a bird's nest, you got to really, really mess up because that's quite an easy, easy coral to keep. Also managed to kill a forest fire digi up here on top, which actually... You know what it's not the first one i've done that too i'm forest fire is not my forte i can do pretty well with montiporas and montipora digitatas i have some other ones in here that are doing quite well for the most part over here you see i got the red the stellata and the digi and the starburst monty kind of right behind there and i group them all together because usually monties can touch without hurting each other some more red monty here and some green plating these are capricornus species Forest fire, mm, I don't know. It's just a little bit trickier in my experience. So anyways, that's not the point of today's video. This tank has been going through a lot of headache. And what was really, really strange, it's probably one of the strangest issues I've ever dealt with in terms of issues with a reef tank. Every day at 3 o'clock, around 2 to 3 o'clock, all of the Zoas in the tank would close. So in the display portion of the tank we don't have that many i have some scrambled eggs back there and i have some more scrambled eggs here because i love them and some what else do we have some purple monsters some armageddons but what you don't see is this tank ties into a much larger frag system in the basement so as you can see there's no sump here on the bottom it's just being used as ugly storage which drives me nuts but anyways usually you'd have a sump there what this tank does is it drains into our basement into a larger oh the mysterious basement we don't go down here often enough why because it's kind of messy and it's not really anything to show off you guys seem to like it anyways this is the larger system it's draining into and it's about to get another section here so i'm going to do a video on all the upgrades we're looking to make at fragbox because we're constantly trying to improve right now one of the biggest things we got to improve is our cable management so on this tank if you saw the video about the fire hazard it's a disaster i'm not proud of it so this is all going to come out this little office area all this and then we're going to add another seven foot frag tank from there to the wall but anyways this was up until recently completely jam-packed with zoas i mean you could hardly see the gravel on the bottom and it doesn't have as many unfortunately in here now so that display tank you saw upstairs drains through the floor here through this inch and a half drain and it comes this way and then it drops down into this overflow which goes into this sump down here and then our water is sent back up da, 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 with our CJ pumps, runs through the aquarium. And then what you don't see in the back here, we have just a, um, a small pump shooting from this overflow back to the tank upstairs. So essentially, it's just one enormous sort of loop, as you can see there. So upstairs, you see a 90 gallon. It's a little deceiving. It's actually closer to 350, maybe 400 gallons, and it's going to be quite a bit larger so every day three o'clock these zoas would close and they'd open up back around six or seven i was trying to figure it out uh, they started dying and melting i lost quite a bit i'm pretty uh, bummed out about it this was stuff i had been growing for years i'm there's some color variations i'm sure i'm i'm not going to find again so what happened with this tank uh, this is my theory at least I, um, this is what i think happened 
the tank was getting neglected. So what does that mean? So believe it or not, I actually have a life outside of Fragbox. Um, it wouldn't appear to be so if you watch the videos and, and see that we're doing a video every day. I actually have a life outside of here, at least I try to have one. And it's summertime here in Canada and we're just coming out of COVID. So for two reasons, the tank's getting neglected. One, naturally, I think most of you can appreciate the fact that during the summer, our aquariums tend to get neglected. It's nice outside, our focus is turned towards gardening and home improvement, barbecues and spending time with dogs in the park. And I see not just myself, but a lot of customers we don't see as often in the summer months and the aquariums sort of take a back seat to um, all of these things that we don't get to enjoy during the winter. So this tank was getting neglected for that fact. And if you agree with that, or if you're maybe a little bit uh, can sympathize with that experience comment below do you do you have the, the aquarium summertime sadness I can tell you that our business drops off remarkably during the summer and this is absolutely a seasonal hobby I'm not gonna like show you our numbers of sales but I can tell you in the summer months we do a third of what we do in the winter this is my theory it gets cold uh, up here in Canada it gets really really cold People aren't going outside, they're not doing as much outside, they spend more time indoors. Oh honey, look at the aquarium, it's not looking as good and they start to focus and spend more. I've seen that trend in the business occur for the last, uh, the entire business, 10, 12, whatever, how many years it's been. So that's one reason it was getting neglected. Two, the tank was just doing phenomenal, like everything was doing good. I posted that video about doing less. like trying to keep your hands out of the water and just sort of letting the aquarium take care of it yourself. So between kind of being busy with other hobbies and then also the tank doing phenomenal, myself and I think the staff included, we kind of just let the tank go on autopilot. That was a mistake. So what happened? Some of the values got out of whack. We're not checking nitrates and phosphates as regularly, uh, as often, sorry. And the tank went through a crazy, crazy cyano, cyanobacteria red slime bloom that I should have recorded but it was so bad it was embarrassing to see these beautiful corals covered in that horrible red sludge it was really really bad and I promised I would show you guys the good and the bad I was it was really bad this was the worst cyano outbreak I have ever had so being busy, instead of trying to address the problem, um, which was nutrient imbalance and not enough flow, so what had happened was a couple of the um, pumps we were using died. Tank wasn't getting enough flow. I should have changed the pumps. I should have tried to reduce nitrogen phosphate. I took the easy way out by using ChemiClean, which is a cyanobacteria just absolute destroyer. And it worked like a charm pretty, well, it worked pretty good. It got rid of most of it, but it didn't solve the, the problem completely because it was really, really bad. The pH on this tank was stupid high. So after running it, the skimmer was going crazy. It's still going crazy. I haven't been able to get it dialed in. I have it turned off right now, this Curve 9 Elite Bubble Magus. But the, the pH on this system was running 8.4, 8.5, 8.6. 8 and I noticed that during the day when we were um, around 3 o'clock is when the pH in this tank would peak. So the corals are growing and they're using carbon dioxide um, in order to turn the light photosynthetically into food, but so does cyanobacteria. So I think what was happening was the zoas were basically competing for carbon dioxide in the water against the cyanobacteria. It was getting depleted. I don't have any way of testing CO2 in the water. When it gets depleted, it runs a higher pH. So I was noticing on my apex that around the same time when the zoas would close, the pH would spike. So it would come down around, it was basically between three and six is when the pH was really at its highest, which is good. Typically you want your pH uh, as high as you can get it. 8.3, 8.4 is good. We were getting too high. It was becoming too basic. So what I did to correct that is just manually remove as much cyanobacteria as I could and then add, it's getting, this is getting a little bit complex, uh, the reef chemistry, so I'm not sure how advanced some of our, our viewers are, but I started using muriatic acid, which will lower the alkalinity. I use this right here. It's actually the same stuff I use to clean um, stuff in the store of coralline algae, which I'll talk about in the next video. But 
the muriatic acid I used to reduce the pH and also reduce the alkalinity and that seems to have worked and the zoas and the, actually the torch corals were affected quite badly too. Everything seems to sort of rebound it. I'm not losing any more corals. It's all back to normal. It's probably, I was pulling my hair out for about a week. It was keeping me up late at night researching. I could really not find any info of anybody having the same experience except one guy at the end of a reef central thread mentioned that he had the exact same problem with Zoa's closing during the midpoint of his day um, after dosing chemically. And I got one little sentence from somebody that had the same experience. I don't know if anyone else is gonna, if this is ever gonna help anyone. I just thought I would share um, what happened and how I fixed it. This is just my theory. Obviously, we don't know 100%, but by lowering the pH in the tank, which is something I've never had to do, let alone heard of any reefer trying to do that. Generally in this hobby, we're constantly trying to raise pH. We're battling to try and get it higher to improve um, coral growth. You usually get better coral growth, calcification, and stuff like that with higher pH. But I was trying to do the opposite, which is a completely new experience for me. Quite stressful, the tank's doing good. pH is balanced out around 7.8, 7.9 at night and about 8.1 during the day. I've turned off the refugium running on this tank temporarily to help aid with that. And everything's looking good. Now, what am I gonna do now to prevent this from happening again in the future? I'm starting to remove the gravel. And if I show you how much detritus, actually not if I show you, I will show you how much is trapped in here. I'm a little bit old school in my approach to reef keeping. So it was a thick gravel sand bed, which had some benefits, but it was just trapped too much gunk in it and I'm not using any effective cleanup crew to mix it and keep it um, nice and clean. So I have, you know, three, four years of shit building up in the sand and I think that was uh, in part fueling the, the cy uh, cyanobacteria. So every day I'm slowly taking out with a five gallon bucket a portion to grow corals. I've never seen anybody grow them the way, this is a farm farm system. I wish I, I recorded it before we went through this loss, but I've never seen anyone grow out corals uh, in recent days with a substrate like this. Generally, when you're trying to grow out corals, you do it like, let me show you, something like this. So you have your frag tank, you have an elevated frag rack where you can place your colonies, your grow out, your frags, and then you wanna use power heads to try and sweep the bottom clean of any detritus you can do lots of flow and then you can actually see detritus build up and and remove it and i guess i'm still learning as i go i'm old school when it comes to this this worked for a long time it's not working with this aquarium anymore it's not serving its purpose so i'm going to change my approach i know that this style of growing works i've done this for years anyways i'm going to pull out the gravel i'm going to set up some frag racks i'll do a video if you're interested let me know in the comments below as we revamp this entire grow out system. I'm actually probably going to pull off these radions. I'm going to move them to our new system and I'm going to go back in time to over here, T5 Reef Brights. And I can talk about why I'm doing that in another video as well. I'm a big believer of T5. I still think they're very powerful and useful growing lights, but I'm glad to say that this issue is more or less resolved. The cyanobacteria is gone. What did I learn from this? try to beat things in a natural method before relying on a chemical solution, which is a very old rule of mine that I simply forgot. And I guess I had to be taught the lesson again, but a lot of people preach that same lesson online. I wasn't looking at the root cause of the issue. I was looking for a band-aid solution so that I could keep enjoying my summer with doing the most minimal amount of work, which obviously came around and bit me in the ass. And it was a painful lesson that I guess it took two times for me to learn. ChemiClean is absolutely, uh, it works. It's a great product. It's a Band-Aid solution. And that's what I learned from this unfortunate series of events. But anyways, I think that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. Your feedback does shape the content here at Fragbox and helps us decide um, what we're going to talk about next because obviously I want to do videos that you guys are going to enjoy. I'm doing this for us, for me, because I really like it. Uh, I hope that shows in the enthusiasm of the videos, but also for you guys, because we love to share our experiences like this disaster that I just went through so that you don't have to go through that 
and hopefully don't have to kill any corals the way I unfortunately had to do. But yeah, yeah, seems like a wrap. This is back to normal, looking good. I'll give it a couple weeks and then um, the one good thing, okay, it's a little bit messed up to say, you know, I don't want to kill coral, but we had a massive green tortusa right here, Acropora colony that took up, I don't know if you've seen the tank in person or in the other videos, it took up a huge portion of this tank. Uh, it started peeling. I managed to frag it and save 70% of it. Uh, it looks pretty good. I got a, a dozen frags and a nice big chunk to regrow it from, but I can kind of say I like the look. Like this has opened up completely and it almost gives you like a window to that rock there in the back where, um, where you couldn't really see. It was kind of blocked before. So I'm kind of happy that piece is gone because I would have never taken it out by my own accord. I, I kind of needed something like this to happen. Please disregard this hammer over here on the bottom. I could talk about this stuff all day, guys. I literally love, love, love doing these things, talking about reef tanks, being here at the store, talking to you guys, everything reef related. This is, this is what we do here at Fragbox, but that's about it for today's video. Um, give us thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, a video every single day, which is nuts. No one else is doing a video a day. We're trying our best here, guys. Stay safe and uh, thank for watching this episode of Fragbox TV.